what do you call a person without a body and without a nose? Dumb. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> you like straight up remember and memorize these? All right, everybody. Thank you again so much for tuning in. What we're going to go through today is some uncomfortable relocation truths for you. What yeah. is it actually like and what are the biggest painstaking tasks that it entails? Things Stay you tuned. Know. Things you want to know. All right, everybody, thank you again so much for tuning in today. My name is Lucas Holt, your local realtor to the Southwest Washington and greater Portland area. And again, we are adding that back at it, it again. again. So thank you again for tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, hit that like button, hit subscribe and hit that bell button for us. And again, you see that number and you see that email. Give us a call, give us a text, give us an email anytime, 24 seven, put us to work for you. And let's find out how to get your, you your next house here in the greater Portland area. So like I said, what we're gonna go through today is exactly kind of some relocation truths that I know relocation isn't exactly the most fun process for a lot of you out here. And let's be honest, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Our job here, we work almost exclusively with relocation individuals. I myself, I've done this process myself. I was from, say, I, I'm originally from Michigan, moved all the way from Michigan to San Diego, and then moved from San Diego up here to the greater Portland area. I'd made essentially three cross country uh, moves for us. So I know what, I, what I'm talking about when it comes to relocation. I know how to help out clients like yourselves. Um, so what we're gonna do, let's go through and let's talk about a little bit of those pain points that might come up in how we're here to serve you and help you during this whole process and hopefully make the process suck a little bit less for you, right? So let's go on to our number one for you. I think this is the biggest glaring obvious thing when you are moving across the nation or just across state lines or across the state somewhere. So you're probably not gonna know the area that great or as great as the area you're coming from. That's an issue that I had when I moved here is that I had only visited Portland two, maybe three times mm -hmm. um, before I moved from San Diego to here. And those two or three times that I was here was actually only for job interviews. I was only here for a day and actually stayed at my mother-in-law's in Seattle during the nighttime. Mm -hmm. So my relocation here, I knew very, very little about the Portland area. Right. But with that being said, I actually used the same team that I work for right now to buy my first house here in Portland before I even officially moved here. Right. So I had bought that house before I even actually lived here. And I'll tell you what we did is kind of take my experience and kind of expanded our whole process around that to make it more tailored for people that ha don't know exactly everything in this area. So the first things to do is what, what do we do to help you guys out? We hop on that Zoom call that we've been talking about all the time. So give us a call. Let's set up that Zoom call. And what do we go over in that Zoom call, Addy? Yeah, well, we get to know you primarily. Exactly. Like we want to know when you're visiting, what your priorities are, non-negotiable, kids, no kids, lifestyle, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But backing up to like yep. the whole travel thing. Yep. I imagine like Oh, when I go on vacation, I don't necessarily navigate through the city <laughs> like the locals do. Right. I'm dependent on f my phone, maybe instructions from the airport, what I've Googled. So we bring in the insight not only when you come here, we want you, Lucas's term, wandering with a purpose so you're effective. Some people come yep. here, I only have two and a half days off. Mm-hmm to come visit and half of that's travel and we want you actually moving throughout the city in these different areas that yep. fit the parameters discovered from the intro call mm -hmm. right and making it super effective i mean even in our neighborhood it's not the shiniest area up in nopo where mm -hmm. we live right 
And it's super easy to like take the Lombard exit and find a listing right off the freeway, which a Lucas and my family, we don't take the Lombard exit. You take Rosa parks. It's much nobody prettier. that lives in that area takes the Lombard. No exit. one does. We actually call one of the intersections, the corner of crazy and crazy, but <laughs> Google maps takes you right on Lombard to one of the roughest areas that you would never go through. So it's, that's just a quick story of like, you actually need to talk to us and let us build out that hotspot and agenda plan so that you're actually seeing these neighborhoods. And it's not just the inner city, it's the burbs as well. Westland, Tiger, Tualatin, Beaverton mm -hmm. all have their own exits that you wouldn't, wouldn't take. Exactly. And we don't want you dependent on Google and Maps. So that's what I was getting at with that yeah. Zoom call or intro call as Addy called it right yeah, there yeah. for us. So on that call, we're going to get to know you. The very first thing, and mm -hmm. in my opinion, of you getting to know the city is us getting to know you and so what we do with that is we start figuring out what your personality is like right. what do you like to do on your off time that is the biggest thing for pets me. kids exactly new construction no new construction that's, that right there is yeah. going to influence so much of yeah. where you are going to want to live in the portland area we go skiing and snowboarding we're hikers mm -hmm. we're not we're beachgoers yeah. we're tr international travelers exactly all these things because i can tell you right now for for my Myself, I love hiking and I go out on hikes all the time with my wife and our dog. I swear my dog drinks Red Bull every morning, so I need to figure out a way to get energy out of him. Yeah. And so that's why we landed on North Portland is because we love doing that stuff. And so the Columbia Gorge and St. Helens, Mount Hood, that's all within a very doable distance. Mm -hmm. Now, if we wanted to go out a little bit further, start talking west, such as your Beaverton Hillsboro, yeah. we're just getting further and further away from all those activities that we really like to do on the weekends with my wife, right? Yeah. So again, getting to know you, that's going to be key in you getting to know the area. Mm -hmm. Because once we have this call, I'm going to generate what I call my hotspot list for right. you, all right? So this hotspot list is going to be tailored to you and tailored to the areas that are going to be a great fit for your personality and what you want out lifestyle. of a home in the lifestyle. Yeah. So when you come to a town, you're not going to be wandering around aimlessly like Addy said, right? right? So the first time you come to a town, likely you've done it before. You drive around and drive around trying to get a feel of the area and by the end of your trip probably your day to two that you had here it's all going to mix together and you're not going to know what the hell you just looked at so this hot spot list like yeah. addy said is getting you to wander around with a purpose it's going to get you into these certain suburbs that are going to match your goals up and it's going to be yeah. able to get you into hey knowing what pocket in is involved with what what kind of commercial areas around their restaurants all that kind of stuff along with the residential neighborhoods of that specific area and so that whole hot spot list is really tailored to make it a a plate more places that will vibe with you but b kind of get you on that target where when you do leave town then yeah. it sticks out more and it's not just one jumbled mess for you well and to kind of bookend the first bullet point of just location and knowing things i tell another story in a different life i went to phoenix arizona for 30 days for corporate training yeah 30 days and then recently this year my wife and i visited friends for three days I know more living and being toured by my local friends in three days than I did actually right. living at the Hilton in Phoenix for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Like that is really the great way to sum up you want to be with someone showing you the exactly <laughs> so i mean to again to put a bookend on this yeah. i just had a client in town mm -hmm. that was actually still deciding between colorado yeah. and portland itself so denver sure. to be specific so again the reason I bring this up as kind of twofold. So first off, I don't care if you're still considering another city. Let's have that conversation and let's talk about it and let's really still develop a strategy for you moving forward. Sure. The other reason why I throw that out there is I want to be a resource for you and help you out. I want to bring more to the table yeah. than anybody else can for you. And so with this hotspot list that I gave them, they were able to actually get a little bit more insight on the greater mm. Portland area than yeah. what they were able to in Denver. And 
so they ended up falling in love with Portland because they felt like they knew the city better than what they knew out in Denver there for them. And so they just fell in love with Portland a little bit more. So again, if and that's way more affordable, right? It is a little Sorry. bit more affordable. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to slide that one in. Right, right. So I guess I can't take all Not the credit to mention there, the thirty percent but... haircut yeah, right. on the price. <laughs> So with that being said, definitely reach out to us and let's get that hot spot list rolling for so you what's the next so one? that you do know the areas. The next thing is, is that you might not find a house on your first visit. It's okay True. if you don't find a house on your first visit. It's not the first time that we've ever encountered that, right? Yeah, so, a lot of people try to hit a home run with like the visit and the offer and accepted offer. If that happens, love it. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is we don't want to compromise your non-negotiables and standards just to try to make that all happen. So often it turns into a virtual business relationship with you, myself, and the relocating family. That's exactly it. And that's one thing kind of, I mean, I don't want to say that the pandemic brought us anything good, but at the end of the day, it did bring us a lot more technology and video conferencing that we're used to right. out yeah, of the yeah, pandemic now. Um, it's hard to find somebody that's not used to going on a Zoom call now at this point or a FaceTime, They're something like that, right? They're still out <laughs> there. I, I do see you out there. But with that totally. being said, it is a super easy process that I can get you used to yeah. and I can get you in tune with. When I when you're out here first, I want to meet up with you, get some coffee, whatever it be. If you're ready to start looking at houses, start looking at those houses. Yeah. But from there, if you're ready to continue looking at houses, if maybe we didn't get an accepted offer or yeah. just maybe you didn't find the one, yeah. then we can move to that virtual plan for you where I can show you houses virtually in really that first visit is generating that trust that you have in myself to actually yeah. be able to show you homes with the confidence that I'm going to be pointing out stuff. So my background is actually on the construction side of the industry. Mm -hmm. I used to be working with electrical contractors themselves. So I know a lot about the electrical side of home building and I know a lot about the residential side of building as well, right? So within that time touring homes, again, I'm going to be looking looking at a lot of kind of like building defects, all that kind of stuff. I mean, basically getting a high level inspection when we're sure. going through homes. And when you leave town and we move that to a virtual relationship for you, I am even more stringent on the little details than if you were there with me because you're no longer there to see the little imperfections. I will stick my camera in corners and crevices that it's not supposed to be in in order to get you a full view of that house for you. Yeah. So if you don't find that house on your first visit in, we can move that to a virtual tour. Yeah. And trust me, I have not had a client yet that has been disappointed in a house that they have bought virtually. And I can tell you, we have done that tons and tons of times for you. Well, and notice too, like, though this is a negative video in the sense, like, what's a pain in the ass to move? Mm -hmm. Our entire system from getting to know you on Zoom, preparing, you know, strategic use of time when you come visit mm -hmm. and invest money to and yep. time off to come see the city it's all created to build trust and reduce yep. the stress so that our entire system is, is built for you right that is relocating yeah absolutely so, so lastly i think one of the biggest pains that we got to talk about is in my opinion there's a lot of hidden costs to moving and relocating so yeah. it's not only relocation it's inflation and just everything so freaking expensive everything yeah. it's just kind of piling up yeah. right so i will say the the first thing to kind of look at for it, hidden expenses when mm. you are moving the thing that popped out the biggest to uh, me and my wife when we moved is going to be your moving expenses just right off the bat. Oh that was goodness. so much more expensive than what we ever anticipated Pack it Pack it up, keep it, recycle it, don't buy new, keep, like all, uh, uh, all of it. Load right? it per week. I will tell you, like, if you are moving across yeah. state lines, if you have anything bigger than a kitchen table, chuck it that's that's what i always tell people at this point it is if you're using a professional moving company it is cheaper to get a new piece of furniture than it is to move the furniture that you already have you had a client that did the weight to weight cost on a cutting board 
and it truly was cheaper mm-hmm. cross country to just buy a just new buy cutting a new board one. than to ship a cutting board. That's a ex- cutting board. That's exactly yeah. So that moving cost is so astronomically high; it's ridiculous. Yeah. And the one thing I will always say, until um, I'm blue in the face, that your moving company, without a question, you need to know who you're working with. Um, there's a lot of moving brokers out there who sell your contract to just the highest bidder. Mm. Um, that's why they're so cheap on right. the front end there. Um, so vet that moving broker out. Make sure you know what company is yeah. moving what, moving you when you sign on the contract that it's i i'm going to get probably in trouble for saying this but there's a lot of predatory practices out there with that kind of stuff that i learned when i was moving so yeah. definitely vet your companies when you're looking at that so the other hidden costs on there again though is i would say restocking your home even so mm-hmm. that's one thing to think about when you do move to a new home you have to look at pretty much a whole new pantry right, right. so i maybe it's because i'm six foot ten and <laughs> <laughs> nearly 300 pounds right but it's not a cheap endeavor um it adds up you know cleaning supplies pantry all mm -hmm. of this stuff that you're you know reloading imagine like eight weeks of little grocery and costco runs condensed into one injection right that's a lot (laughs) exactly exactly so beyond that though too i do want to talk about stuff with your house as well Mm -hmm. so if you do move forward to actually buy that house before you come or maybe like most of our clients do have that house as your landing pad for as soon as you get up here you're driving and you have that destination as your new house big hidden cost in there is going to be deferred maintenance on your home this is big and just to put that into a little story mode here is we've owned multiple homes and i've obviously helped hundreds of people buy a home. It's incredible how things just kaput weeks after the new owner. It's like, how did you (laughs) time that so perfectly that this thing just stopped working? It's like Like, they have like a snare trap set up for like 30 days after they leave. Just enough to keep it going, just enough. And it can be as dramatic as say a dryer or washer or Mm -hmm. an HVAC system, or as little as like a door handle. You're like, How did that door handle just have enough turns to when it's my physical door handle, the thing falls and breaks, right? right? It just kind of happens. I don't know how, but it's something financially you must be prepared for. And it's another thing not to like steal the stage, but being the money guy, I super preach with not tying up all your liquidity and assets into the down payment and Mm -hmm. closing costs. It might be a little bit of a higher pay, higher monthly payment for you, but having that cushion, you know, two, three, six, maybe even more months of overhead reserves or savings outside is going to, it's the biggest lifestyle change. You like move throughout life with so much more ease and yeah. less stress. And to kind of put a further emphasis on that. So one thing Addy has always taught me myself, I actually purchased my house using Addy yeah. back in the day and everything. And Addy taught me just a great calculation for you is a general $10,000 towards your down payment is typically going to equate out to $50 less on your monthly payment of right. your house. So if you put down 10,000 more, you have 50 bucks less on your monthly payment. So at the end of the day, what's more important to you? Having $10,000 in your bank account yep. or seeing $50 less on your mortgage payment. So, and again, that's a person by person basis. How much liquidity do you have at the end of the day? Right. Not everyone has that, but if you do, it's, it, it, it just changes. If you, even Mm -hmm. if it's a couple grand, it's always nice to have maybe a little you don't bit have, extra, just having right. a few think about how you handle some of the most stressful things in your life like something breaks down a car accident a health issue the doorknob breaks an appliance and if you can make a, a swift decision and not absorb all the stress it's just it's huge it exactly makes a major difference exactly so those are some of our relocation kind of pains that you might feel when you come to this area so again if you want us to help you out with your move up here we want to hear when you're coming we want to hear about your visit we want to hear about it and we want to make your relocation process suck a little bit less for (laughs) you right so give us a call give us a text give us an email anytime 24 7 and again don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button and all of you have a great great one. Thanks for tuning in.